from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. And I do mean that word, welcome. It is so good to come into your home and we welcome you to this program. And we are so happy that we can share the global headlines with you in the light of what God says about what is happening. Isn't it good that God addressed in the word already about what's happening in the world as we see it today? So exciting. The first one, headline that I will use, Russia tests missiles amid nuke talks. Doesn't make sense to me. How about you? And Congress fiddles as the country's ship sinks. Too bad. And bomb implants emerge as airline terror threat. In other words, the bomb is implanted within the bodies. And they're very, very concerned about this. But before we get into any of that, I want to give you some really, really good news. And that has to do with Reverend Noah Hutchings. Now, he is the gentleman who wrote the, uh, and exposed the errors of the Purpose Driven Church book. He wrote a pamphlet on this subject saying, it is so wrong. Now, I gave this pamphlet out. There you see him on the screen. Wonderful guy. He really is. And uh, he wrote this pamphlet saying that a Purpose Driven Church is certainly in error. And Jack picked up on it, and of course, we were so happy that we were able to give this pamphlet with our offer. And so he called my husband just this past week, and you had a great conversation with well, him, didn't we you? we had a half-hour interview for his radio network, and he said, what have you done to us? I said, why? He said, nothing like this has ever happened. We have had 100,000 requests for that pamphlet. Praise the Lord. And folks, last week, Raxel and I put together almost a two-hour video study on Chrislam, the coming world religion. It's in focus right now. It's emerging. It soon will be here. And when it comes, you and I will be evacuated, gone. The rapture will have occurred. That's how near it is. Proof? Second Thessalonians 2, verses 3 to 8. But listen to me. On September the 10th, this video study will be released. And I'm going to do something different that day. We may discard all headlines and just talk from the heart. Thank you as you stood behind me with the TBN Fiesco. 5,000 of you said, don't go back. And they told me why. I will not. I will be faithful to the Holy Spirit who says no and to 5,000 families who've encouraged me. And furthermore, September the 10th, I'm going to take a program to really let loose. When I was with J. Vernon McGee, he says, you have a new title. You've been called the Walking Bible. Now you're the Belgian Bible bombshell. And I plan to explode. Yes, sir, be you angry and sin not. And you're going to hear things you've probably never heard. But I promise God, the Holy Spirit of God, and all these people who stood behind me, I will preach it heavier and harder than I ever had in my life till God calls me home. Amen. Pray for me. Oh, you know, Jack, those uh, 5,000 mean just the email. That's not including the mail. No. So we just appreciate all of you who wrote to us also saying, God bless you. We're praying for you. We will stand with you as you go around the world every single week. Now, another name. Noah Hutchings was, of course, the one who wrote the book in Exposing the Era of the Purpose Driven Church. Now, this gentleman will remember the name Harold Camping, the 89-year-old founder of a broadcast empire. Well, you know, just uh, this year, he said, they predicted that the world would end. He also had that prediction in 1994, and he was unapologetic. He said, uh, I was wrong then, but I'm right now. And, of course, he was wrong. And Jack has said that he would be wrong. And he's given many, many verses proving that he would be wrong. Jack, give us a few of those verses. Will you Four please? months before he had all of his signs up, I said, it will not happen because I have a Bible that says 120 times that the world will never end. But wait a minute. Doesn't Matthew 
chapter 13, verses 39, 40, 49, chapter 24, verse 3, chapter 28, verse 20, and Hebrews 9, 26 say that the world will end. Mistranslations of the Greek word an, age. The end of the age will end, and then the age of the millennium will come. Proof, Matthew 24, 3, what shall be the sign of your coming, end of the world? No can't be the end of the world. Why? Turn the page, chapter 25, verse 31. Christ comes back, sets up his kingdom here on earth. It hasn't ended. And he's going to rule for a thousand years, Revelation 20, verse 4, so it can't end for 10 centuries. And he says then to those who are prepared, come and inherit the kingdom here on earth. Verse 34 of that chapter. But Rexella, that made me angry that he was proclaiming this truth when the Bible says the earth abides forever, Ecclesiastes 1.4. Yahweh God created the earth, it shall never, never be removed, Psalm 104, verse 5. And it's a world without end, Isaiah 45, 17, Ephesians 3.21. But one other thing angered me. All these Christians who don't want Jesus to come got on and quoted Matthew 24, 36. Oh, of that day and hour knows no man. Hey, when you're going to quote the Bible, quote it correctly. Start with verse 33. You will know when it's near. Who's speaking? Jesus. Not Rick Warren. Jesus. How will you know? By signs. Now get it. You will know. In fact, it's imperative in the Greek. I command you to know when it's near, but not the day and hour. That doesn't bother me. But I heard some preachers get on there and say, Oh, it couldn't happen for 1,500 years, perhaps. Now that is a bigger error than Harold Camping's error, which I'll deal with in a moment. Okay, good, Jack. I want to hear that for sure. But first, I want to ask another question. Have you ever noticed when you're talking to relatives or friends or loved ones about the second coming, sometimes there may be some within the group that will sort of scoff at it. They may even become a little bit angry that you brought it up. Jack, why do you think there's that animosity out there? Rexella, it's hard to understand because... It is one of the most blessed things that will ever happen. When we called up in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, after we hear the call, come up here to Revelation 4, 1, the first thing that happens is we shall see his face, the face of Jesus. Revelation 22, 4, is that so bad? I believe it's because they're backslidden. I checked this out, and I was overwhelmed. Watch this. 2 Timothy 3, 1, This know also the last day, perilous, dangerous time shall come. Why? Verse 4, Because men shall be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Oh, we don't want Jesus to come and spoil everything we've got, this home and this great car and bank accounts. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 12, Iniquity shall abound, and the hearts of men will become cold. Why? Sin! Let's go on some more. 2 Peter 3, 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their lusts, saying, where is the promise of his coming? I'll deal with that more in a minute. And the Laodicean church of Revelation 3, 15 to 18. He says, I know your works are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. The spew there in the Greek is emio, vomit. Why? Because thou sayest, I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. There it is, worldliness. And knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. God forgive you. We ought to be looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Titus 2.13. In other words, they're sort of caught up with what they have uh, right here. Worldliness. All right, and before we go on to more headlines, I just want to ask one more question. You ever heard of the six-day theory? Now, that, of course, uh, points to the coming of the Lord also. And, Jack, you've referred to that before. Would you quickly explain it again? Okay. The rabbis, 2,200 years ago, they weren't trying to frighten people to get ready now. 2,200 years ago taught the six-day theory. What's that? They said a day is like a 1,000 years, and a 1,000 years is like one day, Psalm 90, verse 4. Because of it, God created the world in six days, Genesis 131, and he rested on the seventh day, Genesis 2, 2. What does that mean? 
if each day is like a thousand years, that means that after 6,000 years, our Messiah will come to set up his kingdom on earth, and then he'll rest for the seventh day, the final thousand years of his kingdom here on earth before he renews everything and then reigns forever and ever on earth. Now, who were the rabbis of Judaism who taught this 200 years before Christ was born? Rabbi Akiba, Rabbi Bekai, Rabbi Elias, Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Jose, and Rabbi Isaac. But wait a minute. Gibbons, who did that great work, the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, said, I've studied this thing thoroughly. And for 400 years, every Christian church father, four centuries of it, taught the same theory. Now let's go back to 2 Peter 3, 3. Knowing this verse, that there shall come scoffers in the last days, walking after their own lusts, saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were. What a bunch of nonsense. That's what so many are saying. They, nothing's changed. But verse 10 says, the day of the Lord will come, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you scoff it or not. How do you know? Verse 8, a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day. They taught the same thing Judaism taught. He will reign. Uh, the world will go on for 6,000 years. And then on the seventh day, our Jesus will come to set up his kingdom when he comes as the king of the kings and lord of the lords. And Revelation 19, 16, to rule and reign for that 1,000 year, the seventh day. Now get ready for a shock. Calendars differ a little. But we've just entered the seventh day. Now, you smart preachers say, it could be another 1,500 years. Bunk! <laughs> oh, yeah, that's very exciting, Jack. Amen. We've already entered that day. Yes. So, you know, how about it, friend? I just want to ask a question before I go on here. Would you be glad if the Lord came today? No, would you be glad if the Lord came today? How about it? Are you so enamored with everything here on earth, or would you really be glad? Oh, we need to look forward to the coming of the Lord. Well, when one thinks about the coming of the Lord, you can't help but think about something in the book of Revelation, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And uh, here you see Grant R. Jeffrey, Prince of Darkness, Antichrist, and the New World Order. All right, I'm going to tell you how this goes together with the four horsemen, that first horse. Oh, look at who you see we right there. We used this a couple weeks ago. Tony Blair and President Bill Clinton. Yes, I did use it a couple weeks ago. A global religion. The drive to convince the world's religious leaders that all are really teaching the same core principles. Advanced by leaps and bounds in 2010. Tony Blair's faith and globalization course, which began at Yale University, spread to other prestigious colleges around the world. Blair and former President Bill Clinton joined forces to educate the world's students in interfaithism by launching a program for grade schools and high schools called Face to Faith. Now, you know we're going to be talking here, there you are, something that happened that really shocked me. The Iranian pastor was sentenced to death. It could be executed if he doesn't recant. Going on, I would like for you to see a gentleman. Now, this is the founder and chairman of the American Supreme Council of Islam. Now, Jack, perhaps you would like to read what he had to say. That's Sheikh Kabani. Would you like to read that, please? Get ready for one religion. This is what could happen here in America. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, this is the head man in this country, our country, that's saying this. We see that the Mahdi, that's the Messiah of Islam, will lead a world revolution that will institute a new world order based on the religion of Islam. The Mahdi, their Messiah, will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians. If they accept it, they will be spared. Otherwise, they will be killed. And Prophet Jesus will be the executioner under Mahdi. God help us. Our precious Jesus and executioner of all Jews and Christians who won't become Muslims. Mm, now that's a sad, sad statement. But the first horseman, now we're going to deal with it right now, the first horseman is white, representing peace, 
on Earth. Well, you know, our ex-president and Tony Blair are promoting a world world government and a world religion that will bring peace on earth. Jack, I just can't hardly imagine that. A world government and a world religion, peace, all one. It's been in here for 2,000 years, Revelation 13, verses 1, and then 11 to 18. In verse 1, we have the infamous world dictator, the Antichrist, coming to power. And he has control over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations. Verse 7, global. And in verse 11, this false prophet rises with him. And this prophet does something shocking. Now, he has the two horns of a lamb that speaks as a dragon there in verse 11 and 12. The two horns tie him in with Christianity because Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, John 1, 29. But the speech like a dragon ties him in with satanic powers, Revelation 20, verse 2. And so they make quite a team. And it becomes a one-world government sponsored and backed by a one-word religion. In fact, the false prophet even makes an image in verse 15 to the world dictator, and all the world worships him, Revelation 13, verse 8. Now, this one comes to power on a peace platform. He comes in peaceably, Daniel 11, 21. He enters in peaceably, Daniel 11, 24. Isn't it strange that our president has been asked by many Muslim nations to be the one to start that peace thing and bring it to an end. And he even wants to give up Jerusalem, not to the Jews who own it and belong to them, but to the Palestinians. God forgive our president. So he makes this peace in Daniel 9, 27. Will it work? Will Israel give in? I'm sorry to say yes, because they couldn't have the peace contract unless... They finally do, but Netanyahu is taking a stand like few ever have taken a stand. He says, no, we won't give up Jerusalem. But something happens because Jerusalem is handed over, and that is what begins World War Three, Joel chapter 3, verse 2. And the bloodshed that comes through the other horsemen that we'll mention in a moment will be catastrophic. So the one comes and brings in peace. And that's why he comes on that white horse, because he's imitating the Prince of Peace who comes on a white horse, the Lord Jesus, in Revelation 19.11. All right, Jack, that sounds good, doesn't it? Everybody's willing to kind of accept that white horse. Sounds really, really good. Peace, peace, united, and all the rest. But before we go on to that next one, why we're going to be talking about a brand new offer. Now, it's a special edition. Two disc set, New World Order Rising and Dictator of the New World Order. Take a look at the preview. The New World Order, the final sign preceding Christ's return, was predicted by St. Jerome 1,600 years ago. The fulfillment began on May 1st, 1776 in Germany, as the Illuminati reared its ugly head. Out of this movement sprang six global organizations, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Bilderbergs, the United Nations, and the New Age movement, all promoting a one-world government. In 1933, the announcement of this new world order appeared on the back of the American dollar. How would it begin? By creating a global economic crisis. It's happened. Next, the Bilderberg's plan is the microchipping of the world's citizens by 2017. Recently, Henry Kissinger, advisor to numerous presidents, stated, Obama is primed to create the new world order. He added, we must forge ahead or retreat to chaos. Find out more who, what, where, when, and why. Woo, as I said, this is a special edition to this set. You really need to have all your questions answered on here. And Jack, it's a great offer. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened. 120,000 orders, and it was going for $50, and now you get both of them for $34.95. Plus, you can still get the video from the past, reclaiming and restoring biblical Christianity as a upsell. Now, this is a donation to the ministry, and so please make the call. There's the address. There's the telephone number. What a wonderful gift this is for somebody else. Maybe they have a lot of questions, too. So make the call right now. It is a limited offer, so make the call or write to us. We'll get it in the mail. 
Oh, friends, where did the time go? I just don't quite know, but we are going to go on here with the second horseman, and that is the red horseman of the apocalypse that takes peace. Well, we talked about peace, takes peace from the earth. And let's take a look. Of course, this is happening. Russia test missiles amid nuke talks. Will China's rise lead to war? We're going to go really fast here. Nuclear proliferation may soon become irreversible in North Korea and elsewhere. Iran urges China to play a more significant role in New World Order. Iran test fires long-range missiles capable of striking Israel, U.S. bases. And Abbas, we will rule Palestine from Jerusalem. And the Palestinian Authority finds BB's biblical reference distasteful. I'd like to talk a little more about that. But Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu got an applause heard in the White House and beyond when he I, spoke to them. For his now, stand on Jerusalem. Yes, Jack. Now, the result of this war will be what you're seeing right now. Middle East countries staggered by rising cost of wheat. We'll tell you how that works. Wheat's ride bites bakers. And Congress fiddles as the country's ship sinks. Oh, dear. Soon you will need a master's degree to wash dishes. Oh, brother. And Social Security in grave danger. Now, we are going to talk about the second horseman, the red horseman that takes peace from the earth. And then that next one, the black one, that shows hunger and economic collapse, Jack. Oh, Rexella, what a book. It's right up to date. The rider on the white horse makes peace for seven years, Daniel 9:27, but it's broken after 42 months. And who breaks it? Ezekiel 38:11. A nation says, I will go against them that are at rest, that are at peace. And what happens? It becomes the war of the latter years and latter days, verses 8 and 16 of that 38th chapter. But who is the culprit? Verses 1 and 2, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. This is a nation called Rosh, or Russia in the Greek, Russia in English. And Meshech is Moscow, and Tubal is Tobolsk, all in Russia. And it becomes the greatest war in history. And China joins with them. Kings, plural, in Revelation 16, 12, becomes the most horrendous war in history. Study it. Revelation 9, verses 14 to 18. The verse 18 says, By these three was a third part of men killed, fire, smoke, and brimstone, atomic warfare. And Iran joins with them. Ezekiel 38, verse 5. And she's called Persia there. And Persia changed its name to Iran in 1935. In Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, we have the rider on the black horse, and there's an eagle crying out, a measure of wheat for a penny. A penny was a day's wages. A measure was 16 ounces. It'll take a day's wages to buy a loaf of bread. And things are really happening. And I'm shocked that you used headlines about wheat. Oh, this book is really up to date. Not only that, but they're really wheeling because they've lost everything financially. And we are really in trouble in America with this debt. Revelation 18, verse 10, for one hour's her judgment come. Verse 17, in one hour so great riches has come to nothing. Verse 19, in one hour she made desolate. Folks, it's coming. Mm, we're going to go on to that four horsemen very, very quickly. Now where people are dying in a couple of different ways. Terrorism and disease. Here we are, bomb implants emerge as airline terror threat. Oh, here it is. Body bomb scenario will make it worse for travelers. We all know about terrorism. That's just one aspect. And here we see the disease. Rare E. coli strain drives deadly outbreak across Europe. Woo! Europe losing superbug battle. And scientists warn of spreading superbug. And there you see it, friends. First of all, the terrorism and the worldwide disease. All there in that fourth horseman, Jack. Again, Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. There's a pale, sickly-looking horse, and his name is called Death, and Hell followed with him to destroy a fourth part of mankind through the sword, hunger, death, and the beasts of the field. The sword, that's Islam. I saw the souls of them beheaded for the witness of Jesus, Revelation 20, verse 4. That's coming. I just heard on the news last night that 
Al Qaeda and the Taliban are coming together to plan the greatest devastation against the United States of American American citizens that's ever been known. So much for Chrislam, the one world religion. God help us to get some sense. And then the beast of the earth, all these diseases, 25 new ones, all through animals. Why? The word of God is being fulfilled. The four horsemen are riding, and we need to get ready to meet the Lord. Oh, friends, I ask you this question before. Would you look forward to the coming of the Lord? All of this points to something good, actually. It's the return of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring peace on earth, the Savior of the world. Will you open your heart to him? Oh, Jack, this invitation is so very important. Rick Sella, no matter what our president plans, it's not going to happen until the Prince of Peace, Jesus, comes. Oh, come quickly, Jesus. Help us not to scoff anymore. Look at me, Jesus, precious Lord. God, our Savior, the second member of the Trinity. Oh, thank you for the cross the cross on which you bled and died to cleanse us from sin. I accept what you did for me, Jesus. Come into my heart now. Save me. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Friends, never before have I meant it more. I trust that you prayed that prayer and opened your heart to the Lord. If you did, write to me. There's my address. I'd love to send this first steps in a new direction to you. I'll get it in the mail as soon as I hear from you. Now, here's our announcer to tell you I can receive this wonderful special edition of two discs. Chuck? My friend, to order your copy of the New World Order Combination Set on DVD or VHS, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $34.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $34.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. If you want the truth, call today. Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And this is filled with the truth, the Word of God, a New World Order rising, dictator of the New World Order. It's a combination special edition of two discs. It answers all your questions. There's the address. It's the telephone number. Make the call. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you, I promise. And now, friends, I want to leave you with a very, very good thought. To be spiritually fed, read the Bible with a good appetite, not a bad attitude. Oh, there's a difference. You need to be fed and read the Holy Word of God and accept it. Forgot what God meant it for. We look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. And so do we so very much. Bye-bye.